hands to some action. hands on um, crafty stuff. And um, at the end, we'll do a little marketplace. We have the oat tops here, and Katrina's got her books. So at the end of class, we'll have a little market. Great. That was the most amazing lunch. Thank you so much. <laughs> I'll be for weeks, I'll be rolling on that lunch. <laughs> Big nourish. It was so good. Um, so we're going to just make some simple body care products and we're going to make, I'm just going to show you how to make lotion and shampoo and tooth powder. Great. And what's really fun, we're going to work with that mallow that you harvested so beautifully uh, early uh. on. <laughs> and Amen. what I'd like to do if I have the time, and we didn't do this and that's fine, but I love to take the mallow. And let's say you've got mallow in your garden. Who's got a mallow, a nice fat mallow in your garden? <laughs> Sometimes you don't need it to Just be there. <laughs> so, you know, on a good day, you can pull the whole thing out, root and all, and wash it up, and then chop it up while it's fresh. The root, stems, leaves, everything. And then put it into a little jar, or a quart jar, or a big jar, <laughs> depending on how big it is, um, and fill the jar with water. And so you kind of pack the jar with mallow, fill it up with water, and then just leave it out for a couple hours, sometimes half a day or a full day. Not too long or it starts to go to a funny plant smell, but you can put it in the fridge if it's too hot. But leave it out, and then what's really fun is that water turns to mallow slime. And so with mallow is in the okra family, so it's got those great demulcent, you know, mucilaginous qualities to it. And any plants that do that, there's a lot of beautiful plants. The Siberian elm trees have that demulcent quality, and a lot of beautiful plants do. But that's very soothing to the skin, very softening and rebuilding of skin tissues. So what I like to do is um, put the mallow in the water, let it sit, and then you can use that mallow slime water for your recipes. You can also just drink it, and it's almost like internal aloe vera for your organs, really softening and soothing. So and is it a thickener for, if, like, you put it in soup? And you can add it as a okay. thickener, definitely. It's like egg white. It's kind of that slimy. And, um, and it's, when you drink it, it also is very decongesting. So it just draws out congestion you don't need. So it's a beautiful drink, a very light tonic. And it doesn't work with heat, so you have to use just room temperature or cold water, not heated water, for it to work. But if you didn't pre-soak your mallow water for the day, you can also just put it in the blender and blend it to get the slime water. And so that's what we're going to do, is we're going to just take all this beautiful mallow and drop it in. And slime water, <laughs> mallow is mellow and good for your skin. It's slimy and emulsifying. Grind the whole plant into a goo. It makes fabulous lotion and shampoo. <laughs> so we're going to make both. <laughs> Do you have all these things written down, like in they, your book or Yeah, something? I have a little ditty oh for all gosh. the different 13 plants. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. All right. And because it is mallow with big stalks, it's probably going to go So I will put a thing on top. <laughs> so we're going to just blend it a little bit, turn it on, turn it low, turn it off, okay. <laughs> Great. And then we're going to pour off this beautiful slime. And so mallow makes a really wonderful face mask. So if you're going to make your green juice, it's kind of fun to diversify what you use for your green juice. And you can use um, grass, comfrey, you can use mallow, purslane, all your garden vegetables, any of the garden herbs too. But if you use mallow, you'll strain out the fibers. Was there any water in that? I did. I used water. Maybe half a blender full of water. And maybe a spoon might be useful. <laughs> Thank you so much. So we're going to pour off the water, and then the, the beautiful pulp is a fantastic facial. So just a nice mask. If you're going to take a bath, you can add it to your bath water, and you can use it as a little scrub, and you can also just lay it on your face. And it regenerates and softens and soothes and heals skin.
tissues. And here I am again with the kid thing. <laughs> right. There's nothing better else for a kid's diarrhea. Really? Oh. Tell us more about that. How do you... Right? Because, like, you know, it's rebuilding. It's rebuilding. So you make rice water. We've done that. Some of your kids have diarrhea. You take rice and you cook it in the amount of rice. And the water that's still left, you give that to them. It's sweet, it's fine. And then you add mallow to it, just like you would add aloe to it, to rebuild the gut. Oh. It, will, it will heal their diarrhea much faster than if you did nothing. I mean, the way to heal it is to rest the gut. And that's like resting the gut. Mm. Wow, that's that is really works for adults too. I think. Oh yeah. <laughs> okay. Huh. Nice. But you could also add aloe. Yeah, yeah but not they, don't, as, they don't really like it as much because yeah. this is really a lot yeah. more. This is mellow. Yeah. Aloe's bitter. But yeah. for an adult. Yeah. For an adult, sure. But I think it is an adult. I would rather drink the mellow because it's sweeter. So yeah. Aloe is the thing. So everyone should try the mallow water because it is really fun to just see what happens to your water. And I love drinking mallow water. When you just put mallow in your, your water, your water will get thick. And you can see how slimy it is, of course, just from the blending. So we'll have this lovely water that then we can do two things with. Once you've got your slime water, <laughs> Then if you want to make shampoo, you want to make sudsy slime. And there's several plants that I use to make sudsy slime, which one of them is yucca. Yucca has a lot of saponin. And I never dig up a yucca root because the yucca is too precious and it produces fruits every year. And I love to eat the yucca fruits. So I would only use a root if it was dug up already from a landscaping situation or whatever. But what I'll do is I'll go and harvest one of the leaves, the spiky leaves, down low when it seems like it's about to drop off anyway. I'll cut one of those up, and then I cut it up in pieces, and then I'll blend that with the slime, and that's what makes woo, suds, because you, you blend this slimy water with a saponin-type plant, and then all of a sudden you've got the, the shampoo or soap. But the other plant that I like to use, um, well, and I have some yucca root that came from another uh, yucca situation. That <laughs> and these are pretty dry, and, but they still work. So you can use the yucca root or a yucca stalk, or I use lamb's quarter roots. So when I harvest my lamb's quarters, if I'm going to make pesto with the greens or make a green powder, or I'm just harvesting them out of my gardens, I cut off the roots. And then we're going to blend yucca or lamb's quarter roots, which are also packed with saponins, into this slime water, and you make a sudsy slime. And that's your shampoo. And you can add essential oil if you want. And then you just store your shampoo in a nice jar and then use it and then put it in the fridge because <laughs> it only lasts about a week out of the fridge or it'll start to smell like plant water, <laughs> which isn't as pleasant. <laughs> so that's really fun for shampoo. Just... Yeah. What was the root it was lamb's quarter root. Mm -hmm. um, but what I would like to do with this, instead of making the shampoo, is I'd like to make lotion. So um, we're going to add it back to the blender, and we're going to use this amount to make lotion. And then if anyone wants to take this home, or we could pass it around, but it's such a great skin-supporting gel facial gel. Uh -oh. Whee! All right, that's all right. A little bit of pet texture is going to be good for us. We'll blend it. We'll see. Yeah, I think I'm going to leave that in there. That'll be good. <laughs> okay. And with the yucca, you said um, if you just had one of the leaves chopped up, you would add it. I would, so, put it back in the yeah, blender. so we're going to put this back in the blender, um, the slime, and I would just add the yucca to this, 
blend it up, strain it again, and, strain it again. and then that would be your shampoo yeah. once you add your essential oil if you want. I'm just cutting it up into like inch size pieces so that my blender can handle it. So I kind of, I sort of saw it. I use a serrated knife, like a bread knife, and I cut the yucca into pieces. And then the blender can handle it and, and then it turns sudsy. And that's just the leaf, not the stalk? And that's just the, the leaf, it, which is kind of a stalk. Right, they're pokey at the end. Yeah, and they're pokey at the end, that whole thing. Exactly. And it doesn't stain your hair green. No. <laughs> but it makes you smarter. <laughs> when you take, you take a shower and, it, and you put all this good plant wisdom right on your head, and it goes right into your brain, and you start to come out thinking sharp like a yucca plant and <laughs> fluid. <laughs> it really does. It, it's, it's a good brain infusion <laughs> in a good way. I rarely measure, so approximately, um, some, <laughs> you know, it, the right amount, exactly. I mean, honestly, we could make, uh, this whole thing could be shampoo with about this much roots, and I could also use twice as much roots, and I would still work, and one whole stock of yucca for about maybe two cups of slime. It's actually precisely that. One stock <laughs> for two cups of slime water. Large or small? <laughs> and so then we're gonna take this slime water and we're gonna add just a little bit of coconut oil. We can do that. We can also add a ripe avocado. Sometimes I use that. Ripe avocados. Avocado is another wonderful oil that's very close to our natural skin oil. So I'll blend a, a ripe, and I have a ripe avocado in my car if we want to thicken it up a little bit more to make it more lotion-y. So I don't put oil in the shampoo. I only use the sudsy because I'm, you know, you're trying to clean the oils off. But for lotion, I add oil so that it, our skin gets to have a nice oil. Um, okay, so uh, let's go ahead and do that. And I'll probably just add two tablespoons of oil to this, and we'll blend that up. And I'm very tempted to go run and grab an avocado because it's, it makes it that much more fun. Is it, where's your car? I can go get it. Okay. Unlocked. Yes. Do you? Thank it's you so unlocked. much. It's unlocked. Okay. What's your car look like? It has a bumper sticker on the back that says, Bees Love Weeds. Bees Love Weeds. And it's a Subaru, kind of Subaru, what color? Subaru sort of silvery gold. And the avocados are in a um, basket with a bell pepper. Okay. I know what an avocado looks like. So I bet you can find it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, great. And then we're going to do some essential oil in our, in our lotion. And we have two choices, some lavender or lang lang. Do you have any choice? Okay, perfect. Yeah, or a dash, dash of both. Great. And this is a beautiful essential oil. Just put a little bit in. We'll see if that's enough. And it is fun to think about whatever we put on our skin, we are eating. So it's nice to put edible things on our skin that we want to eat. And certainly the mallow is good and the avocado and the coconut and a little essential oil, all good things for the body. Sometimes I add aloe vera and I'll just cut it in half and scoop out the gel and put that in, or sometimes a bit of peeled cucumber. That would be another addition. So when I make natural lotions, again, you have to use it up within the week and keep it in a cool place. But it is the best body care product you know, you can use. It, it's, it's tough to buy things. I mean, they're all still wonderful, but um, when you really know you're eating it, you want to make sure that it's really good, tasty stuff and fresh. Yeah. Um, what did you use the yucca stock for? That's for, it's full of saponin, which is a sudsy, so, soap. so it's for the soap. Okay. Yeah. Yes. And you said you could use the root or the stem. You could use the root or the stem. Or the stem. Yeah, that's right. 
or so really it's root, stem, or lamb's quarter roots too. The the stock, the root, and the lamb's quarter roots. Yeah. Do you know that ground cover that sap in the area? No. Does it grow around here? Mm -hmm. Ooh. Yeah. And it's um, it is what it says it is. It's a, it's a it's a saponin uh -huh. um, plant. Mm -hmm. and, um, I was wondering. I might just experience. Yeah. Have you heard of bouncing bet? Mm -hmm. That's another saponin plant. Yeah, so anything that you read that has saponin in, you can use that way, where you can, you can make your slime water on, on lots of levels. And then, um, yes, Are you using the thank you. Of the bouncing bed, the root, the leaf? I haven't made it with the bouncing bed. I think I did once, and it was a long time ago, and I probably used the whole upper above plant to experiment with. So I, I would say you'll have to look into it a little more. Okay, we're going to add this wonderful avocado and thicken it up that way and then we'll blend it and pass it around and everybody can put some lotion on. Are there anything um, that you can add for a sunscreen? Yes, that's wonderful. I love to use the aspen dust. So all the aspens actually on the south side of the tree create a little sunscreen and it's just a natural white dust. And you can just put your hand on it and your hand will turn totally white. And when I'm in the woods, I just use that as sunscreen. But I'm thinking, and I haven't done this, but I'm thinking you could just scoop a lot of it off and, <laughs> and get it into a lotion. And it might be enough to create a sunscreen that way. But you can certainly just use direct from the tree if you're in the woods. Yeah. Aspen dust. And it's only on the south side which to me tells me that the tree is protecting itself from the sun. Okay, here we go, lotion. Great, we have our amazing green goddess lotion. <laughs> That's edible. That's edible, yeah. And um, it's lightly lavender essence. It's not too strong, but it's a nice light flavor. And if you wanted to add a, yeah, any more, you're welcome to, but it's a good, I'll demonstrate. <laughs> Should we keep it in the fridge? Yes. Yeah. It doesn't oh. matter. It only lasts for about a week without the fridge. Mm -hmm. I think even in the fridge. Keep it, Probably keep, would. It cool. keep it cool and use it up within the week. That's what the lavender is for. Cool. That's true. Keep it cool. So it feels so good and soothing. And it's amazing how your skin just drinks it in. Yeah. And the avocado can leave just a tiny film, but you just brush it off. As soon as it dries, you just brush it off and you won't, nobody notices. <laughs> Great. Mm. <laughs> Another it's another delicious moment of drinking. <laughs> okay, who wants to be the export pourer? Would you don't mind? Then I might go right into the next recipe. You'll all get to have this experience very soon. <laughs> Yeah, so much fun. Okay, so our next recipe is going to be the horsetail. And horsetail is very simple, too. These are all very, very simple. You can just make them in five minutes. And so it's nice. Then that way you can kind of, when you just have a moment, you can make it a little bit fresh for yourself. So there's two different kinds of horsetails we talked about. The long, straight ones, and then this is the ferny one. They both work well. If I were gonna choose one over the other one, I might go with the other one, the straight one, because it has more silica, because it's tougher, and that's a sign of silica, is the toughness. Beautiful. And that's the one, yeah. That would be my first choice, but this is perfect. And what we're gonna do is grind this, and maybe there's a coffee grinder in the house I could borrow, and if not, we can use this blender and just do it with a dry blender. So we'll have to wait till that, but just fine. 
But oh, and here's aloe vera gel. I use fresh, but that would work too. But we're just going to mix um, all of this horse tail with bentonite clay. And it's just half and half. And then we grind the horse tail very, very fine. Partly because otherwise, when you brush your teeth, you'll have to dental floss if it's not fine enough. Because <laughs> um, you not might get. Thing. Not a bad thing. <laughs> right. Um, so it's just horse tail, clay, and then I use a little mint <coughs> essential oil. That's so beautiful. And then when your powders dry with just a little bit of mint, you just leave it in a container and use your toothbrush to dip into it to brush. And when you're brushing with the, the horsetail, that builds your enamel. And then the clay is very drawing action on your gums. And then the minty flavor just feels good. And sometimes I add a little seaweed, like kelp, to my tooth powder also. And again, it's just to give minerals to your, to your gums. There is one other plant that I brought um, to show you. And we didn't see it on the farm, but it grows on my farm. It's called smartweed. And it's a, uh, it's, a, it's a kind of knotweed. It's in the Polygonaceae family. So it's, um, yeah, we didn't see knotweed, although I think it's here. But one of the qualities of smartweed and knotweed and dock, which is in the same family, curly dock, yellow dock, is that it's astringent, which means it's very tightening. And so you want, if you want to tighten up your gums, if you've ever gone to the dentist and they've done their little check of your gum and they say, oh my gosh, you're a number this or something and they yeah. kind of freak out and then you freak out. If you want, and then they say, oh, we're gonna have to do some invasive something, something. You don't have to do that. What you can do instead is wash your mouth out with an astringent. And one of the astringents that I recommend out of those three, curly dock is great. You can use the root for that especially, or smartweed or knotweed. And the, in, in my book, I talk a lot more and I show pictures of these plants so it's easier to know exactly what I'm talking about. But this is just powdered smartweed stalks. And I just add it to water and swish it. Just do a mouthwash of smartweed root or stalks. Same thing with the yellow dock roots or the old leaves even work too. And that tightens all your gums and builds up your healthy gum tissue again. And it's kind of fun to then return to the dentist and then there's no problem <laughs> in, a, in pretty quick time. Like it could be months how quickly our body can re-change. And that's the beautiful thing about our bodies is that they're always in motion. They're always regenerating. And so when we're given a condition, it's just a tiny snapshot in time and it's not forever. And our bodies can go this way or that way. It's not only one way. We're not going to just degenerate. We actually can regenerate, especially when we bring in the nutrients and the vital energy of our planet. We start to resonate in that direction. So it's fun that we can rebuild and heal our bodies so beautifully. So if anyone would like to take some of this home, I have some to share. And it's very concentrated. So um, you know, a, a half a teaspoon in water or let you know less even would just be enough to swish around and I don't usually swallow it I just swish it and spit it out but anything that's astringent and tightening will work and there's a lot of plants that can do that but these the curly dock is one great one in the smart weed okay beautiful when you're out walking it's such a great idea to just pick horsetail and chew it and it takes a long it doesn't break down very well so you just chew it while you're walking and you don't even notice, you know, it's a nice passing of time. And eventually it breaks down and if it breaks down you can swallow it. But in the meantime, all your enamel is getting a nice support from all the silica as you're chewing. So that's a really great way as often as you can. But brushing your teeth is good with it too. And then ingesting it. So you can do it from lots of different angles. Wonderful. Yes. A friend of ours had a cavity in his back tooth, and the dentist couldn't get to it for a month, mm. and it was aching. Mm. So he um, chewed on wheatgrass, 
and stuck it in the hole, and when he went in a month, his tooth had been healed. Oh, oh, wow. Isn't that cool? It's, very it's cool. really powerful how if we get an infection in our teeth, that's not the end of the world. The infection goes away. The infection can go away. And it's just infection time usually often means stagnation. And wheatgrass and other greens have liquid oxygen in them. So they're circulating. When oxygen comes into an area, it's aerating and circulating. And no longer can that stagnant infection it live because the environment has changed through this living chlorophyll. And so that's a really powerful story. And I find if ever, there's one time when I was on a walkabout and I had a, a really painful tooth, and an infected tooth, tooth perhaps, and I started chewing OSHA greens, and the same thing, it just completely healed. Yeah. And so it's, it is fun to realize that if we get an infection, it doesn't mean your tooth has to come out. In fact, try to avoid having your teeth come out if you can. We need our teeth. And there's ways that we can move an infection out without having to pull the tooth. That's definitely first choice. Yeah. Okay, we have a dry blender, that was fast. So we're gonna blend this up. The clay draws out toxins from your gum. Uh -huh. Okay, so it's been very nicely fined. And this wonderful horsetail now could be part of your green powder. And if, when I make a green powder and when I dry things, I dry it at room temperature, or sometimes I'll use a dehydrator if it's really raining, but we live in such a dry climate, things dry fine and pretty fast outside. But I don't put it in direct sunlight because the UV can break down the chlorophyll. So I, I keep it in the shade and then when I store it, I keep it in a dark jar or a container that's kind of out of the sun. And then it'll last and I try to use up my green powder within that season and then make fresh the next year. But this would be great for a green powder for your supplement or for your tooth powder. And it's really beautiful, fine horsetail now. And now we're going to add some clay. And we, can, we could do it in a cup, I suppose. Or I could do it in this bowl or this jar. Well, this jar is perfect. OK, great. So we're going to pour it in this jar. Beautiful. And sometimes what I do is um, I'd like to make us a, a green juice cocktail to finish out this part of the class. And we'll use a little bit of the horsetail dust as part of our green juice um, to finish off. So I, we can kind of measure by look. So we're just going to double that with the clay. Well, that can from Indigo Autumn. Sometimes they have it here, but not today. And then we can just make a nice mix. And there's your horsetail powder minus the mint. And we can add a little bit of mint. It's here behind the olive oil. Oh, beautiful. And I just do some drops and then shake it up again. And I'll just pass this around. We can smell it. Um, and we also can, if you have a little something, we could. Have you take some home? Yeah. Yeah. I was wondering if you uh, see any negative effects from using a blender. You know, it's not my first choice, although I do use it a lot. I like chewing. <laughs> That's really my first choice. And in the woods, we don't miss anything when we chew. When we use a blender and we oxidate it, we're going to lose some, some stuff. But if you drink it fresh, you know, if you're making a green juice, you drink it fresh, 
that's sort of the best. So blenders are not better than mouth and chew and teeth. That's first. So it's convenient. Yeah, and it makes cool textures and, but that's about it. They're loud and. <laughs> mm -hmm. So there's our lovely horse tooth powder. Yeah, very simple. And then if, if you store it over time in a dry container and you can always add a little more mint oil to refresh in it so you enjoy the, it's actually quite pleasant when you have the mint oil. You get this nice refreshing zing and then it just feels good. It's something very alkalizing and soothing to the gums and the teeth by using this. All right, so there's our lotion and shampoo. And um, the last recipe I'd love to make you all is a thistle lemonade. And so may I have a, a volunteer to go out and harvest um, maybe two upper tops of a thistle, Canada or musk? You don't mind? Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. <laughs> if you don't mind sparing, just a couple. We'd appreciate that a lot. Yeah. I have a question about Are there any thistles that you can't use for this? There's one thistle that I did not like to eat, and that was a scotch thistle. There's a lot of common names to thistles. So the one that, so what I'm just going to say is that I, I mostly love all the thistles, but taste them a little bite, and if it's really bitter, then don't use it. So that was my experience with this one, is it was too bitter. They all look the same. Yeah. yeah, and so most of the thistles that I've run across, they're fine. Yeah. So are the, the needles on the thistles, are they beneficial also? The needles just are pointy, and they're fiber. It's more like a cellulose. Um, so it's not harmful. I do strain them out. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Put this on for a moment while we <laughs> make the green juice, if you'd like. Um, so I'm going to put in an apple. And I use the apple, I use the apple seeds. And the apple seeds have a nice uh, laetrile, which is B17 in the seed and so I don't eat too many of them but if I really do think it's a fantastic idea as a preventative to eat the apricot kernels periodically or the the plum kernels or the peach pits all of those it's a natural B17 laetrile it's also natural form of cyanide so you don't want to eat too many but if you eat just a little bit it site specifically goes to inferior proteins and breaks them down so it's actually a preventative for inferior proteins could build up and become a tumor or something like that. So this is a way of, again, we're always trying to stay ahead of the potential buildup of toxins by eliminating. And a little bit of that apricot kernel or the apple seeds removes those. What about lemon seeds? Maybe. <laughs> I do use lemon seeds too. Sometimes if there's a lot I pull them out, but just for the bitter flavor more than anything but I don't worry about eating lemon seeds either. So we'll do lemon, and we'll do two apples. We'll start with that, and then we'll do our greens next. So this is actually just a little horsetail apple lemon to start with, and then we'll add the thistle. <laughs> Is any of this um, not okay for kids? Kids. Kids. Um, it's all good for kids. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's all very. To make all this with kids. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That would be so fun. And if anyone wanted to take this mallow home, it'd be a, just a fantastic facial. Friday facials. <laughs> <laughs> right. facials. And this is just mallow and water. And I make green juice with mallow and water too. So there's no part of this that isn't wonderful. Yeah. 
And then this, I don't remember if we added any oil to that or not. It's all still very edible. But we'll pour our juice in here. So this is apple and lemon pulp, which is perfectly great to ingest. So sometimes if I don't want a smoothie juice, if I want a clear juice, I will strain it out, but then I'll use this for my salad dressing. And if, if the thistle was in it, I might use that, or if it was mallow, I would use my green pulp for a, a pesto or a dressing, or, or if I don't want to use it, I'll give it to my dog food. <laughs> but anyway, I do end up using it because it is valuable. Thank you. Okay, great. Woohoo! Look at those pretty thistles. Wow. So you fresh, organic, <laughs> This is fresh picked. This is gorgeous. And of course they're a little prickly, but what's fun with the thistle, it's free acupuncture. <laughs> getting all those little wake up points. And if you pick them from the very back spine, it won't get you. <laughs> so sometimes if I just want to pick a few leaves, I'll get it from the back spine. But the entire stock can be placed in. If you had flowers on it, could you add that too? Yes. And we could wash it, but I'm happy to have a little good micro soil going in as well. So we're gonna go ahead and put all this beautiful thistle in <laughs> you stay. We have a bicycle blender and uh, I get the kids on the bike and they go pick the wild things and then we get them to play with us. Okay, here we go. Thistle lemonade coming up. Who can remember the three things that I really love about green juice? This is a, this is a quiz. Chlorophyll, excellent, because chlorophyll is just the sun's blood coming into our own blood transfusion in a way. Okay, good, what else? Enzymes. So this plant is very much vibrating with life force. It was, it's alive, yes. The color. <laughs> color and minerals, that's right. Because this is a perennial, so it's got this deep connected tap, or a, well, it's actually a rhizosome root but it goes down and just brings up so many mineral nutrition for our bodies. So this is just such an amazing thing to do on a daily basis to re-nourish this soil. Just like we feed our garden soil, this is another way to give ourselves back all the good work we do in this life. To, re to return the favors so we can keep doing it. Okay, we're ready to serve our thistle lemonade. So pretty. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. You guys have cups. Come. Fantastic. Here's to the green revolution inside and out. Thank you. Everybody gets a little shot. I could drink this whole amount myself. <laughs> no problem. And if you make a bunch, you can save it in the refrigerator with a lid and a jar, and it'll keep. All right. Cheers. Thank you so much. You guys have been such a pleasure to be with. Hmm. One lemon. And your homework is to do a green juice a day. <laughs> so you want to make sure you like it. And it's nice actually to start the day with a green juice because it's fun to just set the day with the sort of the most vital and then we can do whatever we want after that. <laughs> but it sets us in a nice course in our day. And so if you're going to do it every day, you want to like it. So you could add two apples or ginger or more lemon or with kids sometimes, you know, concentrated um, apple juice, you know, the, the fresh pressed or honey or whatever. But that's how my mom got us to drink it. <laughs> what did you say? Can I 
Delicious. 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 Yeah. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much. Does anyone have questions for Katrina? Can you speak again about the, I think earlier you were saying that the soul is good for um, regeneration of the liver? Yeah. What What was it about the, the thistle that's helping our liver? So we think of thistle and dandelion and burdock. And dandelion is a bitter. Thistle's not that bitter, but it's an incredible detox. And I, actually, I sort of think of the, the liver as getting a little bit wrung out, almost like it's, you're squeezing the sponge to, to clear out the toxins. And I don't know what actual chemical component might do that, but there are these plants that clean our blood, and that's also cleaning the liver. And so um, I'll have to do some more research and get back to you on that one. I'm always looking for reasons yeah. to love my sister. Uh, good. I know. Well, it's quite ironic because, you know, as I've expressed that I've, you know, witnessed a lot of the herbicide world of the spring and the, the spring of the thistles is a big component. And it's just so sad because that's the medicine for the toxin that they're spraying. You know, we need that to clean our liver, but they're killing the medicine. Yeah. Yeah. Um, can you freeze mallow slime to be able to use it in the winter <laughs> when there's not mallow? I've never tried that. Mallow slime ice cubes. <laughs> that would be cool. Let's try it and see. I know heat can denature the slime, but I don't know if freezing does. Yeah. It might work. Beautiful. Well, there's just a little bit of green juice left if anyone wanted to top off. And I know that you might want to do a few recipes too, or how are we doing on timing? So we were, t that Pat and I were talking about doing for our yeah. medicine bundles that we'll be um, compiling on our last class. So um, one of them was yarrow. And so uh, I heard Katrina mentioning earlier about yarrow being a fantastic thing to use as a mosquito repellent and so much more. And so, um, so we make a tincture of the yarrow much in the same way that we've made other tinctures, which who remembers? How do we do this? <laughs> How do we tincture? How do we make a tincture? We use a one to two ratio of plant material to, or is it water to alcohol? No, plant material to menstruum. That's what it is. So basically, um, that's sort of <laughs> how it is. Basically, we fill the jar once with the plant material, making a um, not too firm, not too soft, very cushion. And then we fill the jar again with our alcohol. And so um, I like, uh, as Dana was saying, like a 50% alcohol, so, um, so 100 proof. And, um, and then uh, let that steep for about six weeks. And then we have a great tincture that we can use for so many things. And yarrow is one of those herbs that right now is, um, is blooming. And so if you have this in your world, I really recommend um, doing your tincture at home because it's the kind of tincture that you can really use as a panacea or a cure-all. And so um, we can use yarrow against colds and flu. And it's part of the traditional gypsy remedy for colds and flus, which is uh, yarrow and mint. And then sometimes they use elder in there as well. And then um, also yarrow is really great for the teeth. And so this is a plant that could even um, dried, get blended up into the tooth powder. Um, and But what is a really easy way is um, sometimes I'll take my yarrow tincture and put it in a squirty bottle. And the squirty bottle, you can use that directly for your um, your anti-mosquito, but then you can also squirty right onto your toothbrush and then brush your teeth with that yarrow tincture. And then you can also use that same thing like on your mask, like, ooh, let's sh -sh -sh, like a little extra antiseptic power on your mask that could be a little refreshing if you have to wear your mask for a long time. Um, also as a hand sanitizer. So these are great things that we need for our modern um, pandemic. And so we take that squirty bottle and just squirt the yarrow tincture onto our hands. And even I've been using um, 
like my tincture bottle and just squeezing a couple of dropperfuls of the yarrow tincture onto my hands and then um, washing that around and letting it dry. And that's a fantastic hand sanitizer. Um, yarrow is one of those antibacterial herbs that can help so many things. So that's where like the tooth thing comes in because of all the bacteria in our mouth that, the ally, that is allied by the yarrow. And then also, um, you know, just like I was saying, so many things, basically whatever ails you, give Yarrow a try. Like if it's in your medicine um, bundle, then uh, you might as well see how it works. And so colds, flus, um, even digestive, it's one of those bitter herbs that can help digestion. And so um, on and on, there's so many ways that we can use Yarrow. And um, so that's why I really always make sure every year to tincture some because it's one that I use again and again. Um, it also is one that um, is a great birthing herb because it helps um, to um, quell inflation, inflammation. So, um, so if there's like swollen tissue, it will help that tissue to shrink down and go back to normal. And so, um, so like in birth, if there's like a swollen cervix or a cervical lip, um, I'll give a few doses of yarrow tincture and, and sometimes a little, um, a little arnica homeopathic as well and you can just watch the swelling go away pretty quickly it's very amazing and I'll do those doses pretty quick like every 15 minutes a dose of the yarrow until the swelling has subsided so um, definitely a great herb to plant in your garden if you don't have already a great wild herb that right now up on the passes um, or overland you'll find yarrow it's around um, I have I have been out in the, like up on Kebler Pass last week, and I've been out in the backcountry a little. I'm noticing a lot of people out in the backcountry right now. I think it's kind of a result of people being inside so much, and then also it's like a safe activity for people. And so actually this year I went out to thinking I was going to wildcraft, and I just felt like... I'm just going to use this stuff from my garden this year. <laughs> it feels a little worked in the backcountry. Um, so that was just the feeling I had last weekend when I went out. Um, but feel it out for yourself in the places where you like to go. And if that's your only access to some of these herbs, it might be a great opportunity. But definitely ask the environment around you, check in with yourself, and see how you're feeling, just because definitely a lot of trampled areas and a lot of um, traffic out in the back country, so to be considerate of that. And another great reason to plant this in your garden at home. This is a great companion plant. This is one of the biodynamic plants that we use again and again. And so um, really, really worthy to have a great patch of yarrow or a few different spots of yarrow in your home garden. And um, yeah, I really enjoy. And the yarrow root is also, um, I don't use it very often, but it's a great painkiller. So if someone's having a lot of severe pain, like I know, tooth pain often comes about. And so if someone's having a lot of tooth pain and can't get into the dentist for a while, the yarrow root is a good thing to take and you can grind it up and apply it directly to the painful area. And um, that is a great anodyne. So um, definitely love the yarrow. So I think we might not have a jar, but maybe someone wants to start cutting up the yarrow. And I think there's even a little bit more so we could Okay, great. So I'll get the other stuff. So we'll start chopping and then maybe we can just dump this water and use this jar. Mm -hmm. And are some varieties better than others for this? Yes, don't use the colored. We always want the medicinal yarrow is the white yarrow. Um, so the colored ones are more of uh, like the pink and the yellow are more of an ornamental variety. And I suppose if you don't have access to anything else, you could give it a try. But it wouldn't be, I've never worked with it in that way for medicine. Um, but like I said, if it's all you got, give it a shot. Do you use just the flowers or, or the No, the stem and the, and the leaf are also great awesome. medicine as well. Okay. Yeah. And actually for this tincture, um, Pat brought some dried. So we're going to use some dry and some fresh. And so since we're using the dry and the fresh together, which is something that um, that is um, like it, we're not going to fill the jar the whole way because the dry stuff's going to expand and also... Um, yeah, that's sort of the main thing is just to, since we're using the dry, we'll probably not make the fairy cushion up here like we usually do, but we'll go a little bit lower with that. Be good to do a little plant study on yarrow. Yarrow isn't just a yarrow flower. Yarrow is a 
hundreds of flowers per flower. And um, so if you really look at this flower, you'll see that it's, um, it's very complex. It's not a simple plant. That's why Steiner chose it, because it's not a simple plant at all. Look at the shape of it and see that it is has this conical and yet umbrella, umbel shape. It's not a simple umbel. It goes over and these, all of these little guys are separate. So what does it remind you of? Cauliflower. That's what I was thinking of. Broccoli. Broccoli. Think of an animal. What does it remind you of? Coral. A deer. Deer antlers. Oh. Deer antlers. So how we use this in biodynamics is that we cut it very, very, very close to the stem. We only want the flower. We don't want any of this stemmy stuff. And then we dry it very carefully. And then we stuff it into a deer bladder. Into a what? Deer bladder. A deer bladder. But not just any deer. A stag deer. Okay. A stag deer. And then that bladder with those yarrow flowers is hung in the summer sun beginning around midsummer or whenever the bladder and the and the yarrow can come together. And it hangs for a year. I mean sorry, it hangs for a um, till till um, summer till fall, and then it goes in the ground for a year. or something. Mm -hmm. yeah. It goes in the ground for a year. So it's a very involved process. Yarrow is connected to Venus, okay, as a planet, and um, it's connected to the deer by way of the life forces coming through the animal and terminating in the bladder. So the life forces come through the animal, circulate through the animal, come filtration through the kidneys, and terminate in the bladder. So the alchemy is the yarrow flower, which is connected to Venus, fermenting, if you will, in the terminus, of the stag, the bladder, and that is the alchemy that brings it together. And yarrow in the compost pile is the initiating force in the compost pile. It's what starts this compost pile. And it starts it by the action of sulfur. Think of sulfur as a match, you know? There's sulfur at the end of a match, and if you light it, everything ignites and then you're gone. Okay, so think of it as the initiator. Um, I had a really interesting experience when I was in herb school. I was at my teacher's house and we were having an herb day and we were all just there floundering around in her garden and then all of a sudden she's like, oh, she stepped on a huge spike in her garden that was there but never discovered. She put a, a puncture wound that deep in her foot, and we had to pull out the spike. So what do you suppose we put on that wound? Yarrow. Yarrow. Yeah. Why? For the antheus now. Stops the blood. There you go. And it also pulls anything that's very easy. Uh, deleterious to healing to the surface and out. So it's it's the it's the herb for puncture wounds. So you packed it with the Yeah, we pretty much like packed it. Kind of gave it a little shove in there. Oh, with the spike. <gasps> not with the spike, no, <laughs> not with the spike. But I've never forgotten that lesson. Um, because it was pretty daggone dramatic. You know, yeah. it's your herb teacher, and you're like, oh my god, what do we do, you know? <laughs> and she for sure knew. Go get that yarrow in the corner of my yard and bring me some. And she's like, chewing it up, chewing it up like a tree says. 
<laughs> you know, and then she, you know, chose one of us as a willing pupil to, all right, now stuff that in there. And that was you? No, I didn't do it. <laughs> no, I didn't do it. <laughs> I could have, but I didn't. <laughs> so what is that? I'm trying to remember what that term is for the, um. For, for the blood coagulation. No, no, or for the, the drying of it. What's the drying of it? Oh. <sighs> the drying. <laughs> I'm going to go? No, it's not that. I'll, it'll come to me. Yeah. Astringent. 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 Thank you. <laughs> Astringent, because it pulls things forward from, the st from behind the surface to the surface. So like people who have, you know, questionable puncture wounds and they've never chosen to be vaccinated with tetanus. Good idea. Put it in there. Yeah. Not that they're going to get tetanus or anything, but, you know, it's added insurance. All right. Small, small, small. Small, small. Good job. That's what I like. All right. Are you going to go big in here? Yeah, we're just going to mix. We're going, we're going to mix. Okay. Um, Since there's only one pair of scissors. Yeah, Since there's only one pair of scissors. <laughs> We're going to do a mix, and we've got dried in the bottom. Yeah, let's do the, um, if there's dried here, so let's see how much we can fill with this. And then maybe even do a separate dried fill the jar. Okay. It's fresh. All right, I'm going to let you work on that while okay. I talk about what else we brought. Oh, good. So, we were talking about comfrey earlier in the day. Only a herbalist would grow comfrey in their greenhouse. <laughs> Who the hell else does that? <laughs> so that's what the, that's where this came from. That's why it looks so absolutely completely amazing and luscious. You know, it looked even more amazing and luscious this morning. So um, I love comfrey oil. Who's used comfrey oil? Yeah. Well, if you've never used it before, you're in for a treat. Because, first of all, when you tincture it in oil, it turns this incredible emerald green that you just can't replace anywhere on earth, right? It's amazing. It's amazing. The look of it was amazing. You just want to, like, bathe in it. It's really awesome. And so you cut it up. I probably won't have time to do all of this. But what I do when I make this, have you guys ever heard of chiffonade? Okay. So you stack it, I stack it all up, and I really like the Zen meditation of it, because I want all of the ends to be up here, and all of the stems to, get, to be out. And then I roll it up as tight as I can, right? And that's not really even as tight as I could get it, but you get the idea. And then I take a knife, And I chop it across. And what that ends up doing is it gives me a lot of surface area. So when I put it in the oil, all the surface area of this chiffonade, I pull it apart and I have all these little strips. So all these little strips get the oil as opposed to this big leaf. Or even if you chopped it but you didn't roll it, you wouldn't get the same feeling of this chiffonade strip. And also it's faster, if you do it this way, to get through this, this plant mass. And I could go really, really fine, or I can just go this, you know, quarter inch fine. And remember a while ago we talked about st stone knives? This is a really good use of a stone knife. If you have a stone knife, because my experience with comfrey is they would prefer not to have steel. They like stone on their bodies. Okay. Now, these are really the fleshiest part. And because this is fresh, this is the stem. Because this is fresh, this is where you can get into trouble with it molding. Because see how much moisture is coming out of here? So you don't really have to add that. And in fact, if you're being really precise about it, you can take the ribs out. But 
I've really never had that much trouble with it. However, this is one of these oils that I really think it does really well in low heat as opposed to over time. So this is one of the plants that I'll put in my crock pot on very low and just let it go there for about 24 hours. And usually at about 24 to 48 hours, it's that emerald green I see. What are you doing in the crock pot? I didn't hear. It's just warming and infusing the plant material into the oil. Okay, so it's in oil. Uh-huh, yep. Okay. In oil. What kind of oil do you like to use? Well, with comfrey, you know, I like anything that I want to put on my skin. The trouble is, it's really hard to get high, high quality almond oil. I love almond oil on my skin. But it's really hard to get super high quality oil, almond oil because almonds are not really sustainable. So if you don't mind olive oil, it's, a, it's totally a go-to. And that's what, we, that's what we have to use today. Okay. And if your crock pot it doesn't have like a good temperature gauge, Try a double boiler, um, just because with the oils sometimes and the plant material sometimes in a crock pot it gets um, too hot and you can just smell it that the oil smells slightly charred and um, and that kind of isn't great. It's not yeah. what we're going for. But if you have one that you can control, just go as low as you can and then you can leave it for a while. Um, sure. How long could you leave it in the double boiler? The double boilers, you could do the same thing. What I would do would be like get that water kind of up to heat, then add, turn it way down, add the, um, the double pot with the oil and the plant material, put the lid on, and then just keep it on a pretty low heat for overnight. Yeah. And Katrina, do you have any tips with uh, comfrey, tincturing, comfrey and oil? Well, the only thing that I've done with it is I've done some fresh oil with it, where I'll blend oil with the fresh green and strain it. But again, you don't have a long shelf life with it that way, but it works amazing mm -hmm. um, it's for, for immediate use. Yeah. 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 But for storing it. Um, Could you press it and have more shelf shelf life if you did it that I way? think you might. I mean, the plant matter would still be almost the juice of the comfrey would be in there. Mm -hmm. So I don't know how long that lasts, but... Yeah. Um, as long as you get all the fiber out, it might last long enough. I still keep it in the fridge, but I think because it's in the fridge and the oil, it still is going to be preserved pretty well, but not out on the shelf. If you do get mold in your oil, and do you just scrape the, it off the top, or is the whole batch, like I did lemon balm in the oil, and it had mold on the top? How did it smell? Yeah, exactly. That was a great question. It smelled fine. I just <laughs> removed it, and then... It's great. It smells fine. So yeah. it's the smell. So it's yeah, that's smell. how you'll tell. And I would remove the plant Matter. material, and then I, I will first remove the mold, then remove the plant material, and then um, yeah, and then if it smells okay, like I wouldn't probably personally, I wouldn't like give that away or like offer it to other people, but right. for myself, Just I'd like for, yeah. put it on. Okay. Yeah. Like I had that happen this summer with a calendula, with the almond oil that I wanted to use, yeah. and I made calendula oil, and it went. <laughs> so, um, a friend of mine said, well, don't throw it out, I'll use it on my dog. Because her dog had some kind of rash that was, was just was really was tough. It was always, it just worked great. <laughs> so what about fresh versus dry? You showed us before with dry comfort. It's personal preference, really. Um, I love making fresh oils because I feel really challenged when it comes to it. <laughs> because they're hard. They're hard to do. You know, they're not, they're not the easiest thing to do. They do get moldy and they do get rancid. And so, but with comfrey, I think you're six and a half dozen the other as far as the oil itself. I think comfrey is fine dried. Yeah. I think you're going to get a lot out of it. And it doesn't have to dry totally down. If you've ever taken comfrey leaves and kind of just laid them out someplace where it's warm and dry but not in the sun, you'll find they dry pretty darn quickly. They really do. So. Do they okay. dry okay if you just like hang up the whole stock with all of the leaves? It has to be pretty well ventilated because they like to clump together. 
Do you just want to see if they look, feel dry enough? Mm -hmm. I actually strip the leaves separately off and lay them out on a screen. And then, I mean, that's it. Okay. Um, do you want some sort of tool to get this <laughs> what, ab what about um, tincturing comfrey? Oh, yeah. We've done a lot. So, what do you? Um, what type of uses? I mean, we've talked about the infusions and now in oil. Same as before. What's that? Same, Same as before. before. You can leave it. I mean, you can tincture it too, but. I, I guess what I would say about comfrey, from my personal experience, is it's just so valuable that um, it wouldn't be my first choice to use it as a tincture. I would prefer to use it as an oil, uh, a poultice, a, an infusion, um, because it extracts so easily in water. There's not that much reason, really, to tincture it, except to have it preserved for you're you're on a backpacking trip and you break your bone and you you, you know yeah. so you could use that as a liniment so a tincture um, topically used is a liniment and so that's how you could use it and so again you could use the squirty bottle technique or even with the droppers just use that um that tincture topically um generally i um don't use comfrey tincture very often. Like it's not an herb that I tincture and use but orally, but potentially I know that um, the comfrey homeopathic is something that people really like and that's very effective for some people. And so you could take that um, tincture and dilute it down into homeopathic preparation. Mm -hmm. Could be a way that you could use it. Okay. And then that's um, something that's used for broken bones and that, that kind of like skin injuries. So before I, before I put this in here, this was a, a pretty nice little firm fairy pillow. And all I'm doing is just trying to kind of gently coax the air out so that it is encouraged to sink down into the oil without compressing and leaving air bubbles in there. And with the oil, that's really important. Like with the tincture, we're not so picky about that, but with the oil, getting all that air out is really, really Right. Okay. And it, you can, it, it doesn't take long. Pretty soon, even by probably tomorrow, I'll start to see that emerald green. It's, it's luscious and gorgeous. It's just gorgeous. Do you want to take that home and yeah. put it in your double tier cocktail? I might. Because okay. I got all this rest of this. Yeah, so then you can take that and do I have olive oil. Okay. It's okay. All right. The other one I brought because I knew that Katrina was going to do toothpaste, I thought, oh, how fun. We could, and this is just for examples. I'm not going to actually do this, but we could make um, toothpaste out of lemon balm. That would taste wonderful, right? Mm -hmm. So this is a great alternative if you don't want to use essential oils, but you still want that fresh flavor. Um, or you could dry it and do the green powder with these Okay. Too. So take a sniff. You just I just cut this this morning, right, out of the greenhouse. It just is, you can imagine that on your teeth. Oh, yum, right? And then the other one I think is that since winter's coming up is uh, oregano. Oregano is super important um, in the winter time. Um, you can ste you can make a, a face steam out of oregano. You just chop it up and put it in a, a big uh, dish, a bowl, and um, put a towel over your head. Put your face down in there. It'll clear your sinuses right up. With boiling water. Mm -hmm. yeah. With you, if you have like the inklings of a sinus irritation that wants to go to an infection. This is really good. Thyme is another one that's amazing for this. And the other one that I really love is the, uh, the wild oregano or, um, come on, Minarda. Thank you. Minarda. 
because that really is strong and you can use that as a throat gargle. So I brought the oregano and what I would encourage you guys to do is just pass by here and sniff all this and take some of it home and put it next to where you're sleeping and see if it helps something occur in your dreams because it's also been known to have that happen. And then the last one we were gonna do, if we have time, is calendula. And um, I don't know if you guys grow calendula, but this is pretty well dried calendula. And if you dry it pretty well, you will probably have better success tincturing it. Tincturing it in oil. Because um, it's, it's, a little bit, it's a little bit tricky fresh in oil. That's why I spoiled my oil. Because it's really, really gooey and moist. And the oils that come out of it into the oil you're tincturing, yeah, sometimes they don't play nice. Okay? So um, I'm kind of like what we did a minute ago with the yarrow, a combo, like a quarter fresh to three quarters dry is, is a helpful thing for calendula tincturing in oil. And we don't probably have time to make it today, but it will be in your bundle. Yeah, it's going to appear. We might make salads, uh, we'll take both of these oils and combine them with the salads. Yeah. 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 I have tinctured St. John's wort and calendula together, only because I've had them around at the same time, and I was being lazy. <laughs> That's all. Well, thank you all so much. Such a fun day. Thank you, Katrina, so much. Thanks, Katrina.